See if I can get it up for you. Oh yeah. Look at that. Look at that fish. Today I'm going to share with you something very special. Now I want to share with you my go-to barbel rig that I use. Let's show you my rig. I've been using this probably for a couple of years now, which is the semi-stiff. It's a coated braid. Now they, they used to do braid that was uncoated, but I think that's been taken off or discontinued. Maybe it wasn't as popular, but I did like using it. But if you do want to use one that's not coated, you can buy this and you can strip the coating off yourself, which is very easy. So once you've cut your braid off the spool, what I then do is I take about, probably about six inches, seven inches of the braid and I just, with my nail, sometimes you have to start off with your teeth. Now you can get a special tool to do this, but I'm, I just use my teeth. And just start that off and then drag it off with your nail, like so. Now there you can see that's all the that's the plastic coating that was around the hook length. Now the reason I use this as well is because a lot of the areas I fish on on the big rivers like the Ribble, uh, it's predominantly the Ribble I fish on. It's uh, got lots of bedrock in the barbel. As soon as you hook them, they're straight under there. So a lot of the time I'll get I'll, I'll catch a barbel and I'll inspect my hook length and a lot of this will be stripped off. <laughs> but it's still all right to use. But it just gives you an added bit of security. So. Depending on what bait I'm going to be using um, is depending on, on how I'm going to tie my hook on and how I'm going to attach my pellet. I'll show you that now, it's very simple. Basically all you do with the stripped end, the line that you're going to be working with is the stripped part. So in order to, to do a grin or not, a lot of you will already know this, just make a little loop, simple loop, a bit like a kid's balloon, trap it with your fingers and then using this finger here, just bring, bring the, the main line back up into that pinch and then you've got that little balloons underneath and then with this little tag in all you do is you go through that hole and round the line four times so it's very simple it might not show up on the uh, video basically i'll try and do it so you can see it one it's basically just go in the hole four times two three Depending on how tight you want the, the knot on the pellet, you could, you could actually get away with doing it three times, but I like to do it four. There we go, that's four. And then what you, ended up, what you end up with then is like, it's a, grim, it's a grinner knot. Most of you carp anglers will know what that is. And then just start to pull it tight and you're left with this. And then this, is, this can now be cinched smaller, like so. See onto your finger. Now, basically, if my, imagine my finger's the pellet. You can tighten that down very tight. And there you have an attached pellet onto that. My, my finger is about 20 mil. You could easily attach a 20 mil. And the, the, beauty, the beauty about this is you can use extra large baits, small baits. I could even put an eight mil pellet on there if I really wanted to. Uh, and just to prove that, I'll show that to you. So here we have, these are little eight mil lamprey and heron pellets. Oh, they stink. And then all you do basically here you got your little pellet. Now this works with all different sizes. You can just tighten that down onto the pellet like so. And there you have, that's attached. Now you can just trim that little tag end off. Very simply. You don't have to be too neat. Don't need to go too close to the knot. And there, make sure you put that somewhere and not leaving it on the bank. And now it's time to use the knotless knot to attach a hook. So I'll be using a very sharp size 10 curve shank hook. Now it's important to go through the back of the eye of the hook. Go through the back of the eye. 
bring all the line through right down to the pellet and then because you're fishing for a barbell you, you don't it can be a little bit further off from the bend of the hook i like to do that because you'll get chub that'll come and pick it up and if you use a little bit of a longer hair a lot of the time the chub will just reject it and uh, it'll just leave that bait out in the in the area for longer i go around the shank of the hook probably about seven times and then just come back up the, the shank of the hook and then what you need to do to get through that eye is just take a little just bite a little bit of the plastic off the other end and then that gives you a very thin diameter to squeeze through the eye of the hook like so that's through and just pull it down as you know most of you already know how to tie her rigs and then yeah, that's the finished product. Now a lot of our uh, teammates would use a, a rig aligner, but when I'm using the curved shank hook, I don't really see the need for that. It's down to personal preference really, but I think that's quite an aggressive look. Now, you will notice it. I did leave quite a bit of a gap between the, the shank of the hook and the pellet, and that's because I may want to change to a 14 mil pellet. And also, as previously mentioned, it does help eliminate those chub bites. So there you have that. And as you can see, that's stripped off for about four, four and a half inches behind the hook. And then it goes into the, into the coated part. And then at the other end, all you want to do is tie a little loop. You can go, you can even do a figure of eight. I just double a line up, make a little loop like so, and bring the small, smaller loop through the larger loop. Some people go through twice when you're using coated braid. I don't see the need. That will never come out. It's never let me down. And then just, again, just trim the, the tag end off. Perfect. And there you go, that's your hook length. That's about two and a half foot long. And there's your attached pellet. Fantastic. So here I have my main line, which is going to the end of the rod. And if you can just see there, the first thing I'll slide on is a tail rubber. And then I'll slide on the feeder or lead clip behind that. Now you buy these, I get these from Bank Tackle again. And they come, that's, that's basically one unit there and they do just pull apart. And I think these are fantastic for attaching feeders and even leads, they're fantastic. And that's running on the line. There's nothing behind it, very safe rig. And then it comes down to a little quick change bead, again, from Bank Tackle. These basically open up into two parts. Uh, the back bulbous part, you just slide onto your line. And then this part here, you just tie on like you would tie a hook. There's a little hole in there and you just tie that on. And then you've got a little recess. Now, the loop that we made, that loop that we made at the end of the hook length, will then fit into that recess. So like so, it just fits in very easily. Like that. And then you just close the bulbous part of the quick change bead like so. There's your feeder link behind. Feeders I like to use on the ribble. These Nissa feeders, these are, I think that's a two ounce one. Yeah, that's a two ounce. Fantastic because the rubber part here fits into that clip very, very nicely. And as you can see, that just fits in lovely. And then you would just close that over. There you have a feeder, which is running on your line. This bead acts as a shock absorber again. So when that hits against there, it's fantastic. It's not gonna cause any abrasion on the line. And that's my go-to rig. Thank you very much for watching. God bless you, tight lines, and enjoy your own fishing.